when I first started placing implants, I was very concerned about placing implants into the sinus. Not by design, but sometimes if you've only got a, I mean, if the shortest implant is eight millimeters, and you only have six millimeters of vertical bone between the alveolar crest and the floor of the sinus, what are you going to do? It's going to penetrate the sinus. And I called the different implant companies and they put me in touch with their oral surgeon that was a consultant and none of them really had a good answer for that. Then we had an all on four seminar at my teaching center in Dallas, the Center for Aesthetic Restorative Dentistry card. And this oral surgeon showed all on four cases where he placed root form implants all the way through the sinus into the zygomatic arch. And I said, whoa, it must be, it must not be too detrimental to place implants into the sinus. Then I have lunch with Victor Sindax, who invented, invented the small diameter implant in New York City once a year. And he said that the floor of the sinus has wonderful cortical bone, and if you can engage a small diameter implant or any implant into that, the tip, into that cortical bone, you get a much more solid uh, implant. So, I did some research. This is the, a great article to read, Experimental Study on Penetration of Dental Implants into the maxillary sinus in different depths. The results were there were no signs of inflammatory reactions were observed in any maxillary sinus of the eight dogs tested. The tips of the implants with penetrating depth of one millimeter and two millimeters into the sinus were found to be fully covered with newly formed membrane and partially with new bone. So if you're only in one to two millimeters, the membrane and new bone cover the tip of the implant. The tips of the implants with penetrating depth over three millimeters were exposed in the sinus cavity and showed no membrane or bone coverage, but there was no significant differences were found among groups regarding implant stability, bone to implant contact, and bone area in the implant threads. Conclusions. Despite the protrusion extents, penetration of dental implant into the maxillary sinus with membrane perforation does not compromise the sinus health and the implant osseointegration in canines. Now what this means to me is if an implant is into the sinus three millimeters or less, don't even worry about it. There's no problem. And if it's one to two millimeters, the membrane and bone is going to cover the tip of the implant. If it's three millimeters, there's not going to be any coverage, but it's not going to cause a problem with the sinus. Now, good form says don't place an implant five millimeters into the sinus. That is, there's no reason to do that because the bottom line is you're not going to have enough implant in the vertical bone between the alveolar crest and the, the floor of the sinus. So if you're in the shortest implant is eight millimeters unless you're using one of the fat implants. So if you had one of those implants five millimeters into the sinus, that means you've only got three millimeters of bone and the implant is not going to be stable. So the thing I'm looking at is how stable will the implant be? I'd like the implant to be at least five or six millimeters in bone, in the vertical bone between the alveolar crest and the floor of the sinus. And so if I was using the shortest implant, an eight millimeter, then I would have five millimeters of bone coverage if I only had uh, five millimeters of vertical bone between the alveolar crest and the floor of the sinus. And I would have two to three millimeters of the tip of the implant in the sinus. I'm not really wanting to put it into the sinus, but I do like engaging the cortical bone in the floor of the sinus. All right, let's look at some cases. So this is just about, this is perfect right here. The tip of the implant engages the cortical bone in the floor of the sinus. This one is very good right here too. That's about two millimeters into the sinus. Here's the floor of the sinus. Here's another one. This is just about perfect. There's the floor of the sinus, the cortical bone, and this is about a millimeter and a half or two 
end of the floor of the sinus. Don't worry about that at all. Here's the floor of the sinus, and this implant is about a millimeter and a half or two into the floor. Here's the floor of the sinus right here, and this implant is about three millimeters into the floor of the sinus. This implant is just into the cortical bone, which is part of the floor of the sinus, which is just perfect. This implant is, this is really ideal, because this one is just into the cortical bone. Here's the sinus, and it just goes into the cortical bone on the mesial aspect of the floor of the sinus. So that's going to be a really stable implant. Here's another one probably about a millimeter into the floor of the sinus, just enough to engage that cortical bone on the floor of the sinus. Another one, about a millimeter and a half into the floor. And this one, probably a millimeter and a half or two. Now this is very good. The tip of the implant just engages the cortical bone in the floor of the sinus. And this one is very good too, because that tip of the implant engages quite a bit of the cortical bone in the mesial aspect of the sinus. Here we are about a millimeter and a half, millimeter to a millimeter and a half into the floor. So that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.